Hi, my name is Maurice Poplar. I just shot my first feature film and uh, did the casting myself. I learned a lot of things. I don't want you to bump your head the same way I bumped mine. So here are seven steps for pre-casting, like pre-production, but just stuff to do before you do your casting. Number one, give yourself time for the casting process. It's going to take time to find the right person for your project. You don't want to be stuck on set with somebody who's just not the right person for your project when you're shooting multiple days. So just give yourself time. Um, I think if you've never done a casting before, your first time you're doing casting, you should give a, about a month for each role. Sounds excessive. I wish I'd done this. Number two, get to know all the casting sites. Um, you can do all your casting on the web, but you're going to have to get to know the sites before you actually do your casting. I used uh, LA Casting. LA Casting was easy enough. Not as easy as logging into my Gmail, but it allowed me to do all the casting um, without much embarrassment, without reading any instructions, and it got done. Central Casting. Central Casting was a little too hard for me. Couldn't figure it out. Gave me a headache. I didn't have time to read the instructions. I kept it moving. Craigslist. Mm, stay away from Craigslist. It's a little uh, inconsistent. You're going to see some shady people on there and somebody might not actually show up to your shoot. Number three, pick the right sides. Sides are the uh, scripts that the actors are going to be reading when they're uh, during the audition. And you want to make sure that you get two to three pages, no more than five, that give the actor something to do, some emotional changes, some subtext. If you're looking through the script and you don't see anything like that in the script, maybe you should revisit uh, writing the script. <laughs> Number four, pre-qualify each submission. Make sure you check the IMDB, the acting reel, the headshot, and the height of each actor who submits. Uh, don't waste anybody's time. Is uh, somebody who doesn't have any IMDB credits or doesn't have an acting reel a bad actor? Absolutely not. They could be the best actor for your project. I personally prefer actors who are a little more seasoned. Um, you want somebody who can give a great performance six times in a row so that camera, sound, lighting, and everybody else on set can get their act together, especially when that's only two people doing all those jobs. Um, height's important because you want to make sure everybody fits in the frame. You don't want an awesome two foot, sorry. <laughs> Height's important because you want everybody to fit in the frame. You don't want an awesome five foot tall guy cast with an amazing six foot tall actress that just try to figure out how to make this work. Um, Apple boxes really only go so far. Five, to sag or not to sag? Now this is a personal choice, but I think uh, jumping through the hoops and doing the paperwork is a small price to pay for having access to some of the best actors in the world. Are all SAG actors amazing? No. Are all non-SAG actors miserable? No. Um, with low budget projects like shorts and new media projects, you actually can mix the two, and so it's the best of the both worlds. What about all the rules? SAG's gonna say that you should feed people. SAG's gonna say that you should have a limited number of working hours during the day. I think that's actually common sense. Number six, pay people. Now this is a bit controversial. In my mind, if you're gonna get the equipment, get the location, get the wardrobe, feed folks, you might wanna make sure that your actors actually show up on the day. Giving them some gas money, a small token of your appreciation is a very small price to pay just to make sure people are com as committed to the project as you are. This is also true when it comes to the casting part. If an actor sees that a project doesn't pay anything and they don't know who you are, they probably won't come out to an audition. You're going to get more quality talent to an audition if you're going to be paying than not. You're not a big studio. Nobody's expecting you to pay their rent, but you're asking folks to work. Number seven, give yourself some time. This is just like the first note, but this is the audition day. If you're going to be paying your actors, when you submit a role, you're going to get it in excess of 100 people submitting. But let's just take round numbers. If you get 100 people submit, 50 people look the part, 25 people have great reels and IMDb's, it's going to take you four hours at 10 minutes a person to do that audition. Okay? Give yourself some time. Don't be like me. My first time doing an audition, I had 40 people come in and I had two hours to see them all. I figured half would flake. They all showed up. It, it was a mess. <laughs>
These are seven points you should consider before you do a casting.